it with me, Persele, is live on YouTube as always. But before we go any further, we need to send some good wishes to somebody who's watching from a hospital bed. Jeff, who also gets the first comment, says, hello, currently watching from the hospital after a bad case of kidney stones. Sending you lots and lots of good thoughts, Jeff. And I think lots of other people are joining me and sending you good wishes as well. Give us a kind of geographic direction in which we should be pointing our good thoughts. I mean, you, you don't have to give away your, your exact address, but like roughly, where are you? Give us a continent. Or maybe if you're feeling brave, give us a country. Anyway, wherever you are, uh, sending you lots and lots of uh, good wishes. And hopefully by the end of this episode, you will be feeling better and inspired to um, go back into the normal world rather than um, the other way around. Oh, Mache says, uh, Jeff is in Korea, if I remember correctly. Oh, yes, 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 that's right. Because you were upset about the fact that only one of the Garlin Parfum is being released where you are. Okay, so if we are correct, everybody think Korea. Um, well, for most of us, that's going to be think east. I guess if you're in Australia, it's kind of going to be think north. Um, yes, in Korea confirms Jeff. Thank you very much. Uh, seriously, hope you get better soon. Um, lots of other people here as well, though. Gavin is here too. So is Dave NYC saying, ooh, an action-packed episode. Well, hopefully, hopefully. Uh, Scent Genie is here as well. So is Woozy and Judith saying hello from Nashville all the way on the other side of the world. And Frank Chitown says, greetings from Northern Illinois. Keep the comments coming, keep the questions coming, whether you're watching live or you're watching the recording. If you haven't already subscribed to this channel, please, please, please do consider doing so. And if you do, um, you may as well click on the little bell so that you get notifications of new videos coming your way. And if you would like to find out how you can support my work, please look at the coffee link or the link to my coffee page in the video description below. Okay, so... Settle down. If you're watching the recording, click pause, go and get yourself a drink, or I don't know, can you click pause and resume when you're watching the live? I suppose you can, because this is going to be one of our feature length episodes. And because I would like to cover quite a few things, more than what you see here, because I've got some little sample vials that I obtained as well. And because, because I wanted to look at these things that I'm looking at today together, for various reasons, partly because I've had the samples a while and, and, and I just thought, let's just do them in one video, but partly because we're going to have this kind of overarching theme of, um, I almost dread saying this, but an overarching theme, theme of looking at the price range of things. For those reasons, I am going to allow myself to do the undoable, the unthinkable, and if this video needs to go over an hour, then I will let it go over an hour. As you know, I really, really don't like to let videos go beyond an hour. Although there are plenty of perfume people out there I've noticed who do do videos that are over an hour. So if you're watching the recording, you can see what the running time is. Give yourself a break, break it up into two or three parts. But um, I'm not going to I'm not going to rush it. Rachel says, love your matching shirt. You know, as soon as I did the thumbnail, I thought, oh, no, they're going to think this was deliberate. And <laughs> it kind of looks as though it was completely deliberate. But I assure you, it wasn't consciously deliberate, maybe subliminally, um, subconsciously. Um, let us keep the discussion going in the comments. Let us let us uh, talk about any of these scents that you may have smelt. Um, but I think we should make a start. And I would like to begin with these three uh, Louis Vuittons that you see here. Now, these are not the actual bottles. These are what are what are usually referred to in the industry as lab sample bottles. Um, we have got, one is not new, one actually dates from 2021, but is kind of being re-released as part of this range of what they're calling pure perfumes. Now, whether we have time to discuss the implications of that word pure or not, let's see, because pure means, well, the word pure means certain things, but in perfumery, pure perfume, you know, a lot of people go around calling extras pure perfume, which kind of implies that it's 100% concentration of the of, of the perfume juice, whereas obviously it isn't. And these are not 100% concentrated either. So in 2021, the brand gave us um, pure oud, which uh, we've got here which I'm pretty sure I reviewed on this channel. So if you would like to 
see that review, then do just do a quick search for it. Um, oh, Oris says, Mr. P, if you stream all day, then I can avoid working all day. Well, guess what? You're not going to be able to avoid working all day. Um, we also now have a pure ombre and a pure santal. Now, please, please, please promise me that you will not switch off or switch over to another video when I tell you what I'm about to tell you, because I told you this is going to be partly about price, right? Um, pure Ombre and Pure Santal are 1,000 euros. Yes, that's a one and three zeros for 100 mils. And Pure Oud has gone up <laughs> since it was released. It is now 1,500 euros, I believe, for 100 mils. Holy Smokes says Helen White NYC. Sheesh says DMS. Three exclamation marks says Power Connection. Um, insane says S. Umar. So literally a kidney says Jeff Sheen. And you should know, right, Jeff? Um, uh, <laughs> how many eternities does that buy? Well, funny you should say that because that is the reason why the eternities are here as well, because they're the kind of the other end of the scale. Now, I was in about 12, 14, 18 different minds as to whether to, to even review the, the Louis Vuittons. Um, because what difference would this video, would probably what difference would any video or any article or anything on YouTube or in any magazine make to people who might consider spending a thousand euros or a thousand five hundred euros on um, a perfume, no difference whatsoever. But then if if I started thinking that way, because, you know, I, I don't particularly see myself as having any, you know, the horrible I word, you know, influence. I see, I see this actually as more of an opportunity for me to learn as we're interacting and engaging. And, and hopefully if, well, if there is any influence, hopefully it's mutual. But then I thought, no, let's actually do these because if we are going to somehow talk about price and if I am going to kind of if, if we're going to talk about the range of things available, then it would be weird not to include these. Um, <clears throat> and also because we are going to spray them, we are going to talk about them. I can tell you now, please do not, do not, do not even be tempted to spend that amount of money because um, the Amber and the Santal are really pretty boring. And I think very, very, very cynical. Uh, and I mean, disappointing, disappointing it feels like such a sort of insipid word to use. Um, but yes, I suppose I guess they are disappointing because in the sense that, you know, if, if, if a brand like Louis Vuitton is presenting you with something that they're actually charging a thousand euros for, you can't help but think, oh, wow, this this will probably be amazing. And I'm never going to buy it because I'm never going to spend a thousand euros on a perfume. But maybe I'll be tempted and maybe I'll be thinking, oh, well, perhaps, if you know, perhaps if I sold the kidney, Jeff, I'd be able to afford. I am not in the least bit tempted by these. Not in the least bit. So let us let us first of all have a spray. And, and I realize I'm making it sound as though I'm tempted by the oud. Um, and... And, and actually, I, I, I'm not, well, I haven't been tempted by the Oud since it came out because, you know, because there is no way that I would spend those sorts of amounts of of, of money um, on that, on the Oud. And also, I think there are Ouds out there that are just as good and just as interesting and they're cheaper. But the reason why I'm not lumping the Oud in with the Amber and the Santal is because I do think it's a really, really nice Oud. Now, whether it's a pure Oud or not, is 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 almost a kind of moot point because the brand themselves talk about it having, I think, some synthetic musks and uh, maybe even some synthetic ouds. So, you know, where where are you then with uh, with with the fact that it's a pure oud? Um, but the Santal and the Amber, actually, I, I I don't even think are particularly attractive perfumes. Let's start with the Santal. Now, you tell me if somebody is charging a thousand euros for 100 mils of something that they're calling pure Santal, even though you may think, okay, I'm never gonna spend that amount of money on a perfume, would you think that if you smelt it in a shop, would you think, ah, okay, at least now, I'm not going to be treated to a synthetic sandalwood? 
I thought that, but guess what? I turned out to be wrong because, um, okay, it isn't, thank goodness, thank goodness, LV, for a thousand euros, it isn't a knock you over the head, Ken Halligan's Halfetti, or or knock you over the head in a good way, um, Nasamato Black Afghano, which I kind of do like because I think that's a very, very interesting thing that they've done that that uh, Alessandro Gartieri did there with the synthetic sandalwood. But, you know, insert the name of so many um, current perfumes that play the sandalwood card and are just full of, full, 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 overfull of things like um, Ebonol and Javanol and, and what have you, you know, overdosed. Um, there isn't that much of it in here. But it is in here, and you kind of think, goodness me, this was your opportunity to actually do something so much more interesting with sandalwood. Look at what Jean-Claude Elena did all those years ago with Santal Masoya, which is nowhere near, nowhere near this price range, okay? Um, <clears throat> I'm sure that contains more than its fair... I'm talking about Santal Masoya from Hermes. I'm sure it contains more than its fair share of synthetics. Jean-Claude Elena was very, very unashamed about the fact that he loved synthetics and used synthetics. But the amazing thing about Santal Masoya is that you get a convincing sandalwood note and you don't feel as though you've gone into some horrible, synthetic, uncanny valley where everything is leering at you. Uh... Santal Blush from Tom Ford, I think, is a very kind of an equally interesting but different way of doing the whole sandalwood thing with synthetics. Santal 33 from Le Labo, okay, maybe overworn, but, you know, who can blame some hipsters for having good taste? Really, really great perfume. This, and before anybody leaves a comment, you know, saying about tried on skin, I've had these samples for a while now, and I honestly and genuinely gave them the benefit of the doubt because I thought, surely, surely, something interesting will happen when I wear them on skin. Something interesting will happen if I just kind of leave the blotter for a day and then come back to it. Uh, but but no, um, I, I don't have pre-sprayed ones of these ones because I didn't need to do pre-sprayed ones because as I said, I've, wor I've worn them a few times. Now, the brand says that these are about layering. Well, yeah, that is a lot of money to spend on layering. And as I say, the people who will buy it, because Louis Vuitton will have done their research, and the fact that the Amber and the Santal are coming three years after the Oud shows that clearly the Oud did well enough for the for the two others to be to be created, or I should say bottled. Let's do the Amber as well, because there is a press release, and I want to be <clears throat> I want to I want to treat this review same as what I, I would any other one and read a few bits of the of, of the press release. What are you all saying, though, by the way? Because I feel I've gone carried away on a little bit of a rant. Uh, Rachel says, Mr. P, at this price, it should be interesting in some way. Woozy says, to be fair, they need the synthetics, otherwise they come across as very flat, kind of like how Samsara uses a lot of polysantol. Oh, absolutely. I mean, synthetics totally have a place, but in order to make something compelling, right? Not like this. Uh, Oriana says, if time is money, I have no time for these perfume houses. Um, Pradeep says Stant Santal 33 still has natural sand sandalwood, okay? Uh, what do you feel the actual concentration says, uh, is, says Gavin? I, I don't know. I mean, it's probably sort of pretty standard EDP, I would have thought, if I had to have a guess. David says, my therapist said, sorry, I shouldn't laugh, but I'm, I feel there's a joke coming. My therapist said I needed to work on my cynicism. How could I, though, when there's barely any true source to trust? Um, <clears throat> well, Here's your cynicism, anti-cynicism antidote. It's it's us, right? Hopefully, we're putting a smile on your face as you're watching this. If they're for layering, says Dave NYC, are they admitting these are incomplete? I don't know. Let's spray the amber. Um, I mean, the oud is 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 too powerful for layering, isn't it? Now, the amber they claim has got um, ambergris in it. My nose is probably not um, sophisticated enough to pick out if there is any. The main thing I get is Ambroxan. Now, I actually happen to like the smell of Ambroxan. I think uh, out of those things that, uh, out of the substances that get lumped into the ambery woods category, it's the one that probably least deserves to be in the ambery, angry woods category, because it's actually a very, very pleasant smell. But I don't think, I don't, I, I don't think you, you, <laughs> You need to do this with it. Um, 
say or is it Che or say says since we're doing overpriced let's do a parfum de mali well guess what we've got one coming up because i thought let's do that as well christine says is there any perfume for which we'd pay 1500 pounds I, I wouldn't i can tell you that now i mean no, no way in a million years if i had that sort of money to to to, to, to you know to, to actually sort of spend on on something like perfume um, no, I'd be putting it aside for a really wonderful holiday somewhere or, or something like that. These make Amouage a budget house, says FRD. Um, we should say as well, of course, that this is not the kind of regular price of the Louis Vuitton perfumes. Anyway, um, I, I would like to be able to do 10 perfumes with you, and I don't want to spend ages on these. So uh, I'll just tell you a little bit from the press release. The pur pure perfumes were born of a perfumer's dream. I wanted to share the most beautiful raw materials in my palette in their purest form, says Jacques cavalier Beltrude, who is, of course, the in-house perfumer at Vuitton. With oud, sandalwood, and amber, Louis Vuitton's master perfumer realized a genuine compositional feat. Compositional, they're saying. Capturing three of nature's treasures in all their unadulterated beauty. These um, three emblematic perfumery ingredients intrinsically linked to the history of humanity that have journeyed through eras and cultures since the dawn of time. Three raw materials steeped in magic, seduction, uh, and mystery make a statement in their own right through these virtuoso fragrances. I do not have access uh, to a grass, gas chromatograph. I know that uh, amongst all of the noses in the world, the sort of refined, sophisticated noses. Mine is not up there, you know, right at the top with, with the best of them. And so if they're telling me that these are unadulterated, I guess all I can say is I'm not getting it. Maybe somebody out there with a gas chromatograph will uh, will be able to to, to, you know, to to verify what they're saying. I'm not going to go through lots and lots of it, but let's read the blurb on the Amber and the Santal. Ambergris, they say, has fascinated and enchanted mankind forever. Okay. <laughs> the origins of this legendary raw material brimming with adventure and mystery have long been uncertain. Whence come these blocks sometimes found washed ashore, resembling light stones, yet redolent of a rising incense-like odour that is both wonderfully sensual and reputedly aphrodisiac? In reality, ambergris is a material naturally released by sperm whales that drifts in the sun for many months before reaching land, etc., etc. A traveller par excellence, amber dictates its own rhythm and destination. One doesn't go to it, it comes to us. The small quantities available explain why it is one of the rarest and most expensive raw materials in the world. Essential to the Louis Vuitton fragrance palette, it mingles with ambroxan. Well, then... Why are you saying unadulterated then? A molecule synthesized from clary sage since the 20th century, which became known as a vegetal amber because it shares the velvetiness and sensuality of ambergris. Uh, Pradeep says, send them to Eliam Puente for the gas chromatography. Um, we've got we've got one of Eliam's coming up as well. Um, DMS says, released by sperm whales is a very nice way of phrasing it. Well, <laughs> it is. A loving homage to the eternal fascination for these ingredients, pure ambre weaves an infusion of natural ambergris with the woody, musky vibrancy of ambroxan. Oh, and they're talking about concentration next. Worked in an exceptional 40% concentration, its pared down formula reveals raw amber while bringing it intense radiance and immediate seduction, etc. And as for the Santal, a star ingredient in perfumers' palettes, sandalwood exudes a white, creamy, enveloping woody note capable of giving any composition depth, sophistication, and hold, yet without necessarily standing out. It's a wood that's powerful yet calm, that knows how to enhance other ingredients but which is not always recognized. I wanted to offer it a showcase to reveal its majestic personality, says Jacques Cavalier. To elevate it and make it perceptible from the outset, um, Louis Vuitton's master perfumer combined sandalwood with hedione and ambretolide, two ethereal, floral, and musky notes with exceptional diffusive qualities. I wonder how much hedione is in here. Plucked from the other end of the olfactory spectrum, these luminous ingredients oxygenate the wood, um, lifting it and lending it their unrivaled power of projection, etc., etc. And then comes the oud. They don't talk about the concentration for the santal. Um, the, the, the oud, I remember thinking, let's just have a spray of the oud. <laughs> Oxygenated, Basil res responds to. Um, 
Imagination was the LV Ambroxan bomb that hurt my sinuses, says Jeff. Jeff, <laughs> please, you're still with us. Are we giving you more kidney stones with this video? Um, let's let's do the oud. I remember the oud was a, a very, very attractive, you know, suitably kind of animalic barnyardy oud, but there are lots of other ones that I would buy over this one. Yeah, and it still is. Um, you know, go to a branch of Ajmal and you can get things that are equally convincing um, and, and a lot cheaper. Uh, so... <sighs> There we are. I've got those two out of the way. Now, what does this say? Hang on, this curtain's just bugging me, sorry. What does this say about price? I think the conclusion maybe we're going to come to about price is that we can keep going on and on about it. We can keep getting shocked about it. And we should keep getting, you know, on some level, we should keep getting shocked about it. And we should keep complaining about it in the right places. And we should keep raising our eyebrows. But ultimately, it's also such a weird thing because price has very, very little bearing on quality. Yes, okay, if you look at the lower end of the scale, the cheaper end of the scale, it is difficult to do, it is difficult to make a good perfume that is also cheap. Not impossible, um, clearly, clearly it has been done, but it is difficult. So if something is really, really cheap, chances are it's going to smell cheap. But the higher up you go, it absolutely does not mean um, that you're also getting an increase in quality. Um, and, and I don't know where that leaves us. I think that probably leaves us pulling out our hair, but ultimately maybe making um, very, very personal decisions. Because as I say, there will be people out there for whom this is just going to be an extra purchase when they've popped in to buy a handbag. Um, and there will be people out there who will never in their entire lives have this sort of... Um, throw away money to be able to spend on anything, let alone a perfume. Um, so yes, I, I, I guess that leaves us thinking, I guess that, that leaves us sort of feeling a bit dismayed that this is the kind of benchmark that is being set because other brands will follow. Other, other brands will start thinking, oh, well, if they can charge 1,500, well, we could we could go up to at least 800. It, it, you know, prices never go down, right? Um, so maybe the only real conclusion we can draw is if there's something you like out there now and it's a little bit on the pricey side, start saving up and just buy it now so at least you've got it in your collection because um, it's just going to start getting more and more expensive. Scent Genie says it leaves us with independent perfumers, but they're not cheap either. I mean, at least with independent, with a lot of independent, you know, I don't, I'm not going to be the guy who says, oh, just because they're independent perfumers, that means they're good as well, because there is a lot of cynicism in the independent sector as well. All you need to do is go like to a perfume fair or something and see the brands that launch with like 20 perfumes. And most of the stuff is derivative and in, instantly forgettable and 200 euros for 50 mils. A lot of in indies are not cheap either. But yes, I guess, again, chances are with an independent perfumer, you may get something more interesting. Elian Puente's scents are not cheap, um, but they are the sorts of scents that you could see yourself turning into like a signature scent for a very, very long time, if not the rest of your life, right? Now, I want to um, scroll up a little bit and spend a bit of time seeing what what people are saying uh bec because i have said that we would we need to have a discussion and gavin says these perfumes aren't aimed at me no i'm sure they're not aimed at me either i'm happy as long as there are appropriately priced perfumes aimed at me but but even appropriately priced is um relative isn't it um turn on tune in dropout says there is not cheap and of the scale anymore sorry there is not cheap end of the scale anymore um uh, Domingo says they should scale back the packaging to lower the price. That That's hard for a lot of people because at the moment, retailers insist on packaging of a certain level. Even in leather products, says Dushan, LV isn't better than Hermes. I bow down to your superior wisdom on that. I don't know. Um, Sir Siage Sniffington <laughs> says, Mr. P, what figure do you think is the upper limit for price versus quality? I, I don't, I'd have to think about it. I really, really don't know. At what price point do you think spending more money doesn't get you a higher quality scent? It's a good question. It's a good question. I, I don't know, because there are still plenty of things out there that are really, really excellent for which you don't have to pay much more than £100. And I and it, it's hard for me to say that because £100 is, is, is a lot of money. 
Um, Oriana says, this feels much like the tactic of pushing the price to the breaking point. As long as the bottom line is positive, perfume houses will keep this up. I agree. I can't wait to win the lottery, says Oris. Yeah. Christine says, are there enough of those super rich buyers to keep the companies going? Yes. I think I think that's another thing, conclusion that we can draw. Yes, there are, because the division between the people who can afford and can't afford is getting wider and wider and wider. There are plenty of people who will be able to afford the number of bottles of this that that um, the, that the brand will make. Uh, Ricardo says, I feel like there's a sweet spot between price and quality. Appreciate your thoughts and reflections because it is a big issue. It, it is, it is. And I'm, I'm not sure it's one that we can answer today. Um, uh, Woozy says, Puentes are also very expensive. Well, but they're not cheap, are they? And then there's the whole weird psychology of price thing that you get into that if you make things cheap, people are going to think they're cheap. And so they won't buy them. Um, seeing the cues at LV, I've lost your comment. Where on earth did it go? I know it was Basil. There we go. Seeing the cues at Louis Vuitton boutiques every weekend, I'm sure these uh, pure perfumes will still somewhat move. I'm sure they will as well. Uh, I'm, I'm really appreciating these comments, but maybe we need to move on. I'll come back to them um, later on. I think part of this, says Rachel, is genuine price gouging that is happening across all industries. True. Education in olfaction will help us find quality fragrances. I'm lucky to have spending money. Gavin says, Harrods Perfume Hall is now crazy, massively expanded, and there is still the separate arcade. These are for Harrods customers. That's about all. Okay. Now, I don't know, I don't know whether I should kind of go the way that I was thinking. I would do. Let's let's do something completely different just to kind of break up this discussion. So we, we've done we've done the Louis Vuitton. Let's do one of the, the, the little sample vials that I got for myself. This is the latest from Andrea Mack, the Icelandic based, um, so the Iceland based artist who uh, started her own perfume brand several years ago now. Um, I always find her stuff interesting to, to sample, but it, 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 is a, it is hit and miss for me. Um, and this one is a miss, so we will just do it very, very quickly. But in the interests of fairness, we will do it. It's called Jest. Where is my little vial of it? Here we go. And I have a pre-dipped vial of it as well. My favorite from her remains Coven, which I do like. And I don't know, I don't know why I haven't got around to, to getting myself a bottle of it, because I, I do really, really like it. And each time I think, oh, I really should have a a, a, a bottle of coven in my collection. But Jest, uh, which is credited to Julian Raskinet, I, I never know whether you're meant to pronounce the S in his surname. You'd think you wouldn't, you shouldn't pronounce it, but apparently you do. It's credited to him, which is quite unusual because I don't think she normally gives a credit. Uh, according to their own blurb, Jest is that happy state that carries us into the moment where the soft, warm spring seems right around the corner. Well, we all need that at the moment. Uh, it's sold as an extrait, by the way. Along this exhilarating path of exploration, the sweetness of plum and apple soon gives way to the feverish power of rum and chocolate, an experience of all senses that the smooth vanilla and the wild musk enrich with their earthy envelope. Maybe it sounds better in Icelandic? I don't know. Um, yeah, I. Th there are ways of doing apple in perfumery that work. There are ways of doing rum in perfumery that work. This is like, ironically, for something called jest, this is the really, really angry, tart, standoffish, get away from me because I'm the kind of person that's never told a joke in my life side of apple and rum. Really, really kind of super bitter and aggressive. Um, and no, I, th I thought, I thought it doesn't work. <laughs> and this is, <laughs> we're doing price, okay? This is $230 for 50 mils of extra. Again, not cheap, but, you know, like I said, just because it's expensive doesn't mean it's going to be good, right? Um, Gavin says... I heard a story of someone shopping with a bag of money in Harrods, and when the assistant tried to give them £800 change from the bundle given, she couldn't be bothered with such small change. You're always going to get stories like that. I mean, I, I 
no, not first-hand stories, but second-hand stories of very, very, very similar experiences, especially from back in the day when, because it's weird now, nowadays paying with cash is dodgy, right? And everybody wants you to pay by card because things are more traceable. But back in the day, it was the other way around. And paying with cash was was more reliable and more pucker than paying by card. Um, pre-dipped, pre-dipped jest. <laughs> <laughs> said the vicar to the anyway um yeah it it just stays really really angry um th i suppose if there's if there is anything interesting about it it's it's this kind of sustained sourness you know it, it's not um it's, it's it's unusual nowadays to come across a perfume that just seems to have absolutely no sweetness about it whatsoever but i think the interesting opposite of sweetness is dryness. The, the less interesting, the less appealing opposite of sweetness is sourness. And this is what they've gone for here. Um, uh, I soak raisins in rum, says as Nini, and put them in the apple mix with a touch of cinnamon when I bake an apple pie. And I've made myself hungry now. I think you've made all of us hungry now. Um, so yes, that that is kind of quickly dispensed with. But let's go to another super expensive one which, again, I thought was pretty dull. I mean, not unpleasant, but pretty uninspired. This is the new one from Parfum de Mali. Uh, and I haven't got my pre-dipped blotter here, but I remember it well enough to be able to, to tell you about it. This is called Perseus. And I'll tell you who that one... No, I don't think I have been able to find out who the perfumer is. That one doesn't seem to be credited to anybody. PDM, shock horror, says Jeff. <laughs> Lol at Parfum de Mali. I mean, yeah, they're not cheap either, are they? Um, is this the first Parfum de Mali live review on your channel, says Basil? Is it? I don't think it is, is it? I don't know. I feel like I've written about them before. It, it's, it's not a brand. No, I'm sure I did. What was the super pink one? Um, wasn't there one that, that, that Quentin Biche did? Was that the one that was like crazy pink? Um, like Delina or something like that? Delina, yes, I'm sure, I'm sure I did that one. Parfum de Mali, again, a brand that I feel is is chasing dollars uh, a little bit too cynically. I mean, it, it's kind of very, very similar to Creed, I think, in that a, a lot of the stuff is cynical, not particularly high quality. Uh, attracts a very similar kind of clientele, very, very popular. This is a great stream, says Rachel. Why? Because I'm just being negative about everything. <laughs> that's, that's not what, is that the attitude we're taking? Um, anyway, fragrance bro sphere, says Maché. Yes, I've heard about the fragrance bro sphere. Uh, that feels like the kind of place I kind of do not want to find myself in. Um, like the stream for the team, says Dushan. Oh, I like that. Yes, if you're enjoying the video, <laughs> if you work for Louis Vuitton <laughs> or, or Parfum de Mali, please give this video a thumbs up. Um, yeah, the tenth circle of hell, says Maché. Is that what it is? I'm probably sinned enough to get to at least the eighth circle of hell. Um, anyway, Perseus. Right, so Perseus. Perseus starts off as a very, very, very pleasant, very likable, kind of genuinely easygoing, likable, grapefruity, citrusy scent. I see on their website that there's a lot of solar imagery around it. The bottle, I think, is a kind of bright yellowy orange. The, 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 the background on their website, they've turned a bright yellow. They're saying, immerse yourself in this captivating essence, sorry, in the captivating essence of this latest creation. The luminous, sparkling freshness of pink grapefruit combined with its long-lasting sillage will take you on a refreshing journey. Celebrating the radiance of citrus, Perseus evokes an early morning at Mali when the sun's first rays um, awaken the chateau, warm its gardens, and make its fountains sparkle. <clears throat> um, and, and yes, to start with, it, it is all of those sorts of things. I read somewhere this is a clone of Terre d'Hermès, says S. Omar. Oh, I, I didn't think Terre. I mean, Terre is Terre is, is interesting there with what with what uh, Jean-Claude Elena did with that kind of grapefruity, veti vert, lots of sort of iso -y, super, hedioni sort of thing, and, and an interesting use of musks. This, this isn't as suave, and nowhere near as suave as Terre. But the thing is, as it develops, 
it becomes very, very kind of thinly woody synthetic. Uh, it, it is extremely derivative. And I'm trying to find out, at least on the UK website, how much it is so I can tell you. Right, let's just tap on buy. <laughs> it's £245. £245 for 125 mils of EDP. Apparently it comes, oh my goodness, it comes in a, is in a 75 mil bottle as well, but that's £200. So for another 45, you get another 50 mils. Okay, so again, with this, I would say no, because it's already going down a kind of ambroxany sort of veti very route. Sent Genie says that's hilarious, ex ex except it isn't hilarious, right? You can you can you can almost sort of hear Homer Simpson. What was it in the episode of The Simpsons when he's watching something and he says, "It's funny because it's true." You almost feel like saying that, you know. You sort of think it's funny because it's 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 so insane that it's true. Um, it's made for performance and compliments seekers, says Pradeep. Yeah, but I have a feeling they're going to be a bit disappointed by the performance of this one. Um, so, yeah, you, you, you know, I, I think back to the summer that we had in Sicily, where I picked up uh, uh, local brands, you know, lo and I showed them on this channel, actually, local brand, uh, soliflory type scents of jasmine and orange blossom and bergamot. And I have to say they were just as good as this, if not more charming. And they were sort of like 25 euros per bottle, 30 euros per bottle. And I've still got them and I still enjoy a kind of quick spritz every now and then. But, but, but people, people are going to do it. Um, I just went and sprayed, says Power Connection 1, a bit of vintage Guerlain Chant d'Arome just to make me feel good. Well, because the video is making you feel angry. Well, I might, I don't blame you. It feels like there's a lot of spite coming out in this video. Don't worry, we have got um, two two good ones coming up. But should, should we do, should, let, let's do another really, really horribly crass, cynical one. Let me close some tabs here just to make things easier to find. Shall we do a Fragrance du Bois? <laughs> this is why I wanted to do some of these in one video, just to kind of get them out of the way. This is their new one. <laughs> Basil is just going, ha, 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 This is called, this is new from them, and it's called um, Sirene, which I think, as in siren, mermaid. Um, I hope we're going to end this stream on a good note, though, says Frank Chaita. Yes, we are. Uh, at least two good notes. At least two good notes. I promise you. Um, so, this is Sirene, which um what's sent genie saying we don't need to worry about the price of uh parfum de mali we can all just start our own youtube channel and be sent a free bottle every time they bring one out <laughs> if you say so would you want to would you want i don't know police sirens going off says magic um i've seen the bois siren cap lord have mercy on their souls actually i'm not sure i've seen the cap anyway this this stuff this is this is vile um this is, I mean, ugh. you know, ap apologies to anybody who thinks I'm like belittling medical procedures and medical issues, especially as one of you is watching from hospital. But this feels like the, and I'm saying this with some prior knowledge because I, I couldn't not smell it when I did, did the um, pre-dipped blotter. This is like the equivalent of a, of a, of a, of a lobotomy. It is like, yes, smell this and just feel your brain cells be zapped into oblivion. It is so crass and so crude and so unpleasant. It is basically trying to be a kind of cherry, oody, woody concoction. It. <laughs> Let me look at the cap. Oh, I've seen the cap. Oh, yes, the pink stones. Very, very charming. You kind of get the feeling even Joan Collins would think this is a bit much. Um, or I should say Alexis Carrington. I'm sure Joan Collins herself is impeccable taste. Let's say Alexis Carrington. The brand says this is their first ever female-inspired fragrance. Uh, 
I should stay a little bit polite. Siren is crafted for those who dare to stand out. Well, you would stand out wearing this, actually. I give them that. You would stand out. Infused with a seductive burst of cherries, not seductive, and a captivating blend of pepper and incense, not captivating. Siren embodies a story of empowerment that resonates with every spray. Top notes of cherry and pepper, middle notes of oud, incense, and lactonic, and base notes of moss, benzoin, cistus, labdanum, and cypriol. Um, it's so bad. It's just, it, it, it is just the kind of total encapsulation of immaturity and silliness rather than stupidity it's it's a very it's a kind of it's a silly person a silly giggling person in a way you just kind of want to slap them like like you know the current trend at least in the uk for really really long false eyelashes and pink trap suit <laughs> trap trap suits track suits it it's that kind of thing where you just kind of think no, go away. You have just made my world uglier and I don't want to look upon your type anymore. Um, oh. Does it numb your olfactory receptor neuron, says Rachel? It, it numbs something. It certainly numbs something. Olfactory receptors have left the building, Rachel. It makes you want to Sylvia Plath yourself, says DMS. Ah, oh. It's a high-pitched long vowel scent. Yes which is why I'm sure it will do extremely well. Where is the pre-dipped mermaid? <laughs> you know what? If ever there was a mermaid singing like this somewhere out in the middle of the ocean, the sailors would just turn around and would just go a million nautical miles the other way, thinking, please get us away from whoever this person is. Um, oh, it's just painful. It is just painful. And this is, oh, we haven't done the price. Okay. So this comes in a 75 mil bottle, yes. And this for 75 mils is 230 pounds. So go for the go for the Parfum de Mali, right? That's the bargain. That's the one to go for. Um, <laughs> Power Connection says, have you passed your stone yet, Jeff? <laughs> We're just this is this is public service broadcasting, right? Hopefully, all of this laughter will just help you do what you need to do. Mr. Blackmore says, finally catching you live. Will you ever review La Chasse au Papillon by L'Artisan? It's my favorite floral alongside... Oh, bring us back down to earth. Okay. It has a super pleasant photorealistic linden flower with jasmine. Um, I will see what I can do. I think I've got a few drops of papillon somewhere. Ah, oh. it's, it's almost like Creed Viking proportions, but it's Creed Viking S. Okay, let's close that tab as well. Okay, right. Oh, how are we doing? How are we doing? Do you think I'm going to get banned by 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 somebody or other now? But at least, like, at least I've I've I got the samples myself right, so nobody can complain about. Mind you, nobody could complain anyway because I make with certain brands, I make my terms and conditions very, very, very clear for receiving samples, including Coty, who are the 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 the, the licensee, the people who look after the Eternity, uh, the Calvin Klein perfume brand at the moment. Um, now. Why have we got these two new eternities? Uh, it is because they, rather sadly, I think, um, represent the, the the affordable end of the mainstream. You don't get more mainstream than Calvin Klein now, because, and when I say more mainstream, you know, the, the, they are a notch below in terms of affordability. They are a notch below the likes of, uh, of Dior and, and Chanel, and YSL, I suppose, and Lancome, as far as I know, uh, Calvin Klein haven't done uh, an exclusive range of scents yet. So they are they are um, they are they are the sorts of perfumes that are very much sold at Boots. Even even and by the way, for those of you who don't live in the UK or don't know, Boots is a very very kind of mainstream, very middle of the road uh, uh, chemists that sells lots and lots of other things as well, and is still one of the UK's most important uh fragrance retail markets um because easy he is fishing what are you talking about now uh, where's reno when you need him so oh i know i know he's fishing what do you mean he's fishing how do you know he's fishing um gavin says ck1 and b were always like an entry-level perfume for teens now 
Calvin Klein, I think, absolutely were an amazing perfume brand. Um, and I, I defy anybody to tell me that back in the day, Obsession and Eternity and CK1 were not fantastic pieces of work. I mean, I wore CK1 to death. I wore CK Crave. I wore a lot of um, Eternity as well. There was a time uh, growing up in, in Dubai in the Middle East where you could not take two paces without smelling Eternity for women. Beautiful, beautiful um, Sophia Groisman composition. Contradiction for men was great too, says Gavin. Yeah, and I love that contradiction bottle. Remember how clever it was, where the cap was so massive that you only saw a tiny little bit of the bottle um, in the base. But things um, went off the rails, I suppose, and there hasn't really been an interesting Calvin Klein perfume for the longest time. But, so these are the other end of the scale, but these are not cheap either, okay? Because uh, uh, 100 mils of the women's one is 95 pounds of this one. 100 mils of the men's one is 86 pounds. If you want the 50 mils, it's 69 for the women's ones or 70 pounds for the men's. And what are they? They are another flanker. You know, there have been so many flankers of, of eternity. They're called aromatic essence. So there's an aromatic essence for women and aromatic essence for men. I should tell you who the perfumers are because I was able to find out. Very, very well-known perfumers because these are the sorts of things that go to the big perfume compounding houses. So woman is made by Veronique Nyberg and Julie Massé. Man is made by Daphne, uh, Daphne Bouget and Frank Volkel. So, you know, well-known names. And let's have a spray. Um, but you do kind of have to feel a little bit sad um, when you think this is what the most mainstream of the mainstream is. Let me just label another blotter as well. Calvin, Calvin Klein is grim on every level, says Eric. You know what I should do is, I, I would really, really be interested to find out what current original eternity for women and for men is. I mean, that was such an unusual scent, really. What does essence mean, Rachel? I'm sure it means nothing. I'm sure it means nothing at all. I'm sure it means, oh, what word have we not yet used in the flanker? Oh, yeah, I know. Let's go for that essence word. Um, <clears throat> anyway, so this is the women's one. And let me spray the men's one straight away, because the 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 sad stroke interesting thing about these is that they're not terrible at the beginning, um, and in fact the, the the women's one actually for a few minutes manages to be um, fairly pleasant in that in that kind of bland insipid. Um, shampoo musky don't want to offend anybody kind of way um the woman's one supposedly contains a note of um coconut water and you do get that you do get you do get a sense of the coconut coming through in a way that isn't um excessively sort of suntan lotiony or doesn't go down that kind of really really horrible crass uh, coconut aldehyde which when overused just kind of dominates everything um Jeff says, my stone suddenly feels like a treat compared to what Mr. P's olfactory receptors are currently going through. Good. I'm glad I'm glad you appreciate the suffering and the pain. Um, Calvin Klein made Escape as well, says Power Connection. Yeah, Escape was interesting. I never liked it. I couldn't take Escape at all, but it was interesting as a marine scent and it was, it was a huge um, hit for a while. So uh, what do they say about it? Opens with an aromatic, with aromatic floral hints of lavender, at the heart, a sparkling coconut water record unveils a vibrant gourmand, contrasted by an alluring dry down of sensual woods at the base. And yeah, it's got that kind of watery, clean, as I say, safe, inoffensive feel to it. The men's one, men's one also actually starts off much, much, much better than it ends. Before I started this broadcast, I actually had to push the, 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 the pre-sprayed blotters far away from me because they were interfering with everything else. Because boy does the, the the men's one go down the woody amber's route in a in a very very unpleasant way but what do they say about it a highly contrasted fougere gourmand the fragrance opens with fresh juniper berry essence with woody and gin like facets at the heart the radiance of cardamom adds a spicy quality balanced by a sweet and floral lavender note the seductive warmth of comforting coconut Adds a sexy gourmand twist. Comforting. How would you like some comforting coconut for a sexy twist? <laughs> comforting coconut. How do you like them comforting coconuts? <laughs> Stroke my comforting coconut. Anyway. <laughs> okay. 
Um, oh, Oriana, well done. Fougère gourmande is a fourmande. Very good. We like it. Could we do it the other way around? Could we say gougère? <laughs> Something else entirely. Um, Dave NYC says, do these have anything to do with the original scent profile wise? I would say, I would say no. I would say no. Um, and yet this is, this is what probably most people will be buying. Let's kind of reach over for the, the pre-sprayed, the pre-dipped mermaid. I think from now on, we should always refer to these as the pre-dipped mermaid. And then months to come, people will be wondering what the heck I'm talking about. Um, so this is uh, women's. It's just, it, it's just a very, very bland, very dull shampoo, musky sort of thing. And the men's one, here we go. Mm. Yeah, that that's a lot less pleasant. That's a lot less pleasant. Spiky, ambery woods. So yeah, what can we say? Nice color, right? Good, good choice, Cody. Um, Halloween scent Gougere, yes. Well, now I want Gougere. I know, so do I, actually. I wonder what we're having tonight. I think we're having pasta, <laughs> not Gougere. Um, and I always get confused between Goujon and Gougere. The Gougere, the Gougere is the, 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 the pastry one, isn't it? <sighs> Let's talk about food instead. So, again, as I said, where does this leave us? This leaves us at £1,500, just under £100, and... I don't want any of them. If you gave me a thousand pounds, I would not buy these. If you gave me a hundred, I would not buy these. I would not buy ten of these. I would consider buying these next two. Okay, so let, let's 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 end on a more pleasant note now. Um, <clears throat> let's open some more tabs up. Let's get rid of this. Let's get rid of that. And I actually ought to try and see if I can dig out some um, vintage vintage eternity. Smash the bad ones from your table. I think the perfumes have gone to your head, Mr. P says power connection. Uh no, no, because we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna, we're gonna redress things now. Let's do let's do this one. And I'm not kind of going in any particular order as to sort of say that one is better than the other, not at all. This next one that I only have a small vial for is the latest from Hiram Green, the uh all natural perfumer who is based in I'm, I want to say the Netherlands. Uh here we go with the all natural Hiram Green, says Matcha. Yeah, okay, all natural in inverted commas. I keep meaning, this is no fault of his, okay? It's completely my fault. I keep meaning to contact him and ask him whether he would be interested in um, doing an interview on this channel because I find his work really, really fascinating. Um, Jeff says, Moon Bloom is quite nice. Lots and lots of people love Moon Bloom. I'm sure I've reviewed it. Can you layer the Calvin Klein with the Louis Vuitton, says Gavin. I'm so tempted to do that. Shall we just, no, I don't know. Um, Netherlands, yes, says um, uh, DMS. Ty says, finally, rid yourselves of the negativity and step into perfume heaven. Now, when I did the, the pre-dipped mermaid earlier, I was really, really taken with this. This is called filtre, as in P-H-I-L-T-R-E, uh, as in potion, uh, as in love potion. Um, Rachel says, Hiram Green, exclamation mark, and yes would be great. I assume you mean yes would be great to interview him. Now, I don't know what the intention was with this scent, but when, from now on, OPDM is pre-dipped mermaid. I like it. Um, this, this, this had a transporting quality and immediately took me back to India which I'm sure, well, I'm not sure, I suspect is not what um, Hiring Breen had intended, but it is because it's got a suspiciously high dose, I don't know what to do, I almost went to interview him just to ask him this question, of clove and eugenol, um, and also some kind of a sort of incense rosy note, and I'm back either in India or in the Shah Jasuk trying to find packets of the cheapest, most pungent, most wonderful um, incense sticks, joss sticks. It's a very, very kind of clovey joss stick smell. Um, and, 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 and I think it's terrific. I think it works really, really well. We have a pre-dipped mermaid. Having smelled the pre-dipped mermaid a little while ago, 
I think I can say that maybe some people might be disappointed by the longevity of this particular mermaid, but you know, that's also a personal thing. Let me go to the, the little blurb. Mind you, this is not cheap either, okay? Because what is? Um, <laughs> eternity. Uh, the brand says, for as long as we've been falling in love, we've been making potions to induce that feeling in others. We called them filtre. These, when drunk, would cause the recipient to fall madly in love with the giver. Such was the story of Tristan and Isolde, and the fate that befalls Titania in A Midsummer Night's Dream. Perfumes are our modern day love potions potent and bewitching with the ability to change moods instantly. This is my version, says Hiram Green. No unicorn dust or dragon's blood, just the world's most beautiful flowers, spices and resins built around the flower of love, carnation. Use it carefully after you've stroked your comforting coconut. The notes he lists are flower stems, clove, rose, carnation, jasmine, resins, vanilla and black pepper. And this will set you back 195 euros uh, for 50 mils of EDP. So again, not cheap. But at least when you're smelling it, you are convinced that you are getting something that has been cleverly composed. Um, it's maybe a little bit, you know how some natural perfumes, all natural perfumes, independent perfumes, go for a sort of rough around the edges feel. And this does more of that sort of thing than I think we've had in the past from Hiram Green, because that that carnation facet is, is really quite, um, I don't want to say angry because it's not angry, but it's quite sort of assertive and aggressive in its love potion seeking outness. What was the one, what was the carnation that Serge Lutens gave us um, a few years ago, he called it vitriol, didn't, didn't he? Vitriol doy, doy. I, I can never say the French word for carnation. It's one of the most evil words, you know, the oeillet, what have you meant to say? But I think he understood that carnation has um, a kind of Jekyll and Hyde quality, which it really, really does. You know, that spiciness is very, very marked, very pronounced. And yet that sort of soft floral aspect is there too. And you get a bit of, Jekyll and Hyde here. To me, I can't stop seeing the joss sticks, which could be could be the the, the, the resins, um, but also a really really nicely done indolic jasmine. You know, shades of the jasmine that you get in Andy Towers' Le Maroc pour elle. Um, it was it was it was nicely done. I, I enjoyed smelling it. I enjoyed going and going along with its journey. And this is the the pre dipped mermaid. So let's do a little bit of receptor cleansing. Um, yeah, it's it's gone softer, quieter. So maybe after that initial kind of seduction mode, after the object of the person's affections has been won, they can kind of relax a little bit. Um, I suppose what's coming through is the kind of vanillic aspect. Um, but it's really, really, really charming. Really, really charming. I absolutely would consider saving up 195 euros to buy 50 mils of this, as opposed to, you know, however many hundreds of euros to get something else. Um, what <laughs> spaced, spaced Out is trying to give me a phonetic pronunciation of vitrol du year, I know. I remember once hearing a sales assistant saying it at a shop in the south of France and just thinking, okay, I'm never going to be able to say that word. I'll just go oilet. Um, fragrances shouldn't be natural for the mere sake of it, says Thomas. Um, I agree, but then other people don't, right? And I suppose if you set yourself up as an all-natural perfumer, I don't know how all-natural Hiram Green is. You know, does he use natural isolates? I don't know. Maybe another reason to get him on this channel so that we can ask him. Nathan says, picked up some Parfum de Mali in TK Maxx last week for £55. I don't think I would even pay £55 for a lot of theirs. I seem to be seeing more and more expensive perfumes turning up in places like TK Maxx, Tom Ford, Clive Christian, Interesting. Interesting. I'd love to know how the whole TK Maxx thing works. You know, is 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 it that those perfumes didn't sell? Um, Louis from Garlin was an interesting carnation worth a sniff, says Jeff Sheen. Yes, that was that was a gentler sort of carnation, wasn't it? Um, and 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 last but absolutely not least, let us do the latest from Elian Puente, who very, very kindly gave up his time a few weeks ago to come on this channel for an interview. We talked about this scent when he did the interview, but now 
I can do the review and rip it to shreds. Uh, this is called a Varescence. You know I'm not going to rip it to shreds because I've already given it a, a thumbs up. This is, um, it's interesting comparing it with the Hiram Green because it's more overtly retro. We talked about um, Ellie Arms perfumes and their retroness in the interview. What's interesting is that even though the Hiram Green, the field, is very, very carnation, and carnation usually spells retro, I think because it's so spicy and so incensey, it doesn't take me down the retro carnation route in the way that, for instance, Heaven Can Wait from Frederick Mal did last year. That felt more retro. Virescence from Elian Puente, I think is also retro, which, you know, for me, a lot of the time is a compliment. It, it isn't it isn't pastiche though. It 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 completely feels like something you could wear today, but it doesn't go down the carnation route. So this is the retro, this is the retro of the territory of maybe Chanel number 19 with the great big galbanum opening, but then it also takes you down the line of Aramis with the kind of strong leather note and the strong herbal opening. And when you're in the territory of Aramis, you're also in the territory of Cabochar, and of course, then you're in the territory of Estee Lauder Azure. And then if you want a kind of more modern comparison, you're also kind of in the territory of Francesca Bianchi's, um, somebody help me out, um, Etruscan water. Um, and I, I think it's tremendous. I think it really, really works. Um, uh, Aileen on, on Beauty says, Varescence is a 1970s throwback. It's the soaps I grew up with. It is very, very 1970s, but in a way that I'm I'm okay with. Um, I, I like, I really not like, I, I really, really admire and appreciate the balance between the greens and the leathers. I like the way the mossiness starts creeping in from the very beginning. I like that kind of suggestion of a sort of woody vetiver note that, that is there but doesn't dominate. Um, where I don't go along with Eliane, um, and let me actually tell you the, the, the blurb, I, I kind of, I think he and I have a different take on what he has created. So their description, the brand, the, the the website description is sparkling aldehydes and galbanum are softened by ylang ylang bergamot and a touch of neroli. At its heart, the delicate scent of muguet, rose, and iris intertwined with the flamboyance of jasmine, sorry, jasmine sandback and tuberose. Extracts of vetiver and sandalwood bring depth, richness, and elegance to the sensual musk base. Now the words that stand out for me from this are uh, softened, delicate intertwine, flamboyance, sensual, maybe even sparkling. To me, this isn't that kind of scent. To me, I kind of latch on to the fact that the virescence name, that the first part of that name makes me think of the word virile. This for me is a kind of modern take on the hairy chestedness of things like Aramis. I pick up on the sort of aromatic herbaliness of the top very much. The, 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 the official notes list aldehydes, galbanum, ylang ylang, bergamot, narrowly, not overtly the kind of thing that I seem to be responding to, and yet they are there, you know, I get leatheriness. Um, Thomas says, how green is it compared to Bel Respiro? Bel Respiro is really, really kind of outdoorsy, freshly cut grass. It's got that kind of marine note without being overly kind of, you know, aqueous. This to me, this to me is the sort of greens of the leathers of of of, of Bondi, you know, from uh, from Piguet. I get the feeling from his description that Eliam doesn't sort of see it that way, but there we are. Uh, Power Connection says, me too. Um, do you mean, do you mean as in you agree with me? Uh, Mr. Blackmore says, Mr. P, what are your thoughts on Nasamato Duro? It's one of my all-time faves. Oh, I'd have to re-smell it. Sorry. Um, so if you have smelt this, um, let me know where you kind of see it. Do you see it more as Eliam has described it, or do you see it more as I've described it? Um, again, this one is not cheap either, okay? This is, for 50 mils, £181. So, you know, th that that is also a lot of money. Let's look at the pre-dipped mermaid. Um, yeah, it's, I don't want to say it softens, it quietens down, but it is still virile. Um, I get, 
you know, you, you kind of get a silk and steel delicacy here. It's like delicacy with power. It's uh, softness with authoritativeness. I think that description is, is almost selling it a little bit short and doesn't, doesn't bring out the contrasts sufficiently. Um, what's turn on tune in dropouts is I like when there's an episode like this an hour long better than five streams on and off in an hour well we we try to mix it up because I'd done the, the sort of few streams like that yesterday I thought let's go for a long one and also because I thought that there is this kind of loose thread between a lot of these okay but we are done now what's this People, uh, Nathan Thomas says, TK Maxx had some strange love, 100 mils, reduced from 800 pounds to 200, which tells you what the margins are on those. Which TK Maxx's are you going to? I never see anything like that in my TK Maxx. Tell us which, but gosh, that's some, some reduction. Tells you what the margins are on those. Wow. Wow. Gosh, 800. I mean, if you saw, if you saw that in a shop, and if you didn't know the brand, you'd almost think that that was some sort of mistake, wouldn't you? You'd think you'd think they'd sort of added on a zero in in error. Alien on Beauty says, "I'm loving Veresence, and I smell what you do, Mister P. But we are older than Alien. Would that be why? Different old active memories. Now that's an interesting point. That is an interesting point. But then Alien does know his perfumes. He does know his perfumery. Um, but that that's that's a fair point actually. I hadn't thought about that. If we manage to get him on the channel again." then we can ask him that. So, thank you very much for sticking around. We haven't done too badly, actually. We've only gone five minutes over the hour, and we have, in some shape or form, managed to talk about 10 perfumes. So I hope you don't think we treated them all too um, superficially. Thank you very much for watching. If you're watching the recording, please keep the comments coming. Let me know what you think of this. Let me think of some of the things that we've sort of debated and talked about and digressed into. Uh, stay tuned to social media for details of more videos coming your way. Jeff, hope you feel better soon. How much longer have you got to stay in hospital? I hope I hope it'll be as as pain free as it can possibly be. I will see you soon. Be good. Take care. Bye now.